supposed to be? No. It should be very similar. Mine was too. Yeah, I don't know what happened then because okay. I got like point zero two for one of them and point five one for the other one. Okay, so when you so I think it's I forget there's two questions on the second page. What the first question asks you uh, multiply some constants together. When you multiply all that together, what'd you get? Is that what it is? Or is it, is that, what does it say? Mass? Uh, question number five is what was the mass of the cart times the average radius? Okay. And for that one, I got like 0 0.0248. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, and this was mass times average radius. Yes. But then when I actually graph my data, and my graph looks like yours did on the board, so uh -huh. I don't think that's the problem, but my slope that came up on my graphing, and I did it, I actually used like um, Excel sheets, so mm -hmm. I know that Good. it has to Good. be right, but it said it was like 0 0.512, so that's like... Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, mine was 0.52 and I hand grafted. Mine was roughly one half. Okay. Just looking at these, this is the one that's wrong uh, from my memory, the slope is. So I'm not saying Excel did it wrong, but I'm saying you put something in your, in your calculations wrong. Um, I don't have my lab sheet with me, it's at home. Can you remind me, uh, with the, it's the Whirly Twirly Lab, it's the one where you, we've got the cart going around on the thing and there's a string attached to it and that's about all I remember. Remind me of the details of this lab. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even try to solve for the slope, like I just plugged in, like I just put in the tension and the angular speeds that I got off of how'd the you chart. Get, how'd you get your angular speeds? Because what I'm saying is probably one of those numbers isn't right in, in that set. You, you didn't convert something right or something, something went awry in that process. What were you saying, Ashton? I was just uh, telling you what, how we calculated the angular speed. Yeah, okay. How'd you calculate omega? It was too high over, over T. And the time is just in seconds and 2 pi, okay. And I... Uh, What was the other number? Uh, the tension, I think. Tension was the y, and that rating, that angular speed was your x. And that tension was measured on the gauge. Was it already measured in newtons? Yep. So as long as you use seconds here, that'll work. As long as you use newtons here, that'll work. Don't you square the angular speed? Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yes, did you square it? Like, you mean take the square root of 2 pi? No, uh, it should be, let's see, I believe it was tension and omega squared. So you have to find omega and then square it. So all the values, the values that are in the like chart are not squared, and then we need to square them before we put them into the graph. I believe that's uh, omega. Is it? What does it say on the chart? Does it say omega squared, or does it say omega? It says angular speed. There you go. So that's just omega. So you have to square that before you graph it. Okay, that's what I did wrong then. <laughs> okay, and that'll change your slope. That'll change this number a lot. Okay, thank you. Mm hmm I suspect, Ashton, was that the same problem that you had? Yeah. Okay. Why do we have to square it? Uh, that's what the equation is. Um, I 
squared so, so look what we've got. If for this problem, the centripetal force is the tension. So you've got tension equals m omega squared r. And uh, let me group these together, m r omega squared. So if we do y equals uh, m x plus b, then the tension goes with y, and that's on the y-axis. And omega squared goes with x, because that's on the x-axis. And then mr should be the slope. And there, and there is no y-intercept. And so the whole point of all this is to, is to show that reality, that these equations do a good job of describing reality. And then that'll change percent error too, right? Not yep, error. yeah, yeah, you'll, if, once you fix that, make this omega squared, that'll change this number drastically. And once this number changes, then the error between these two will be very different. Would you mind going over that airplane problem? Because I made it a good ways into it and kind of stuck. Okay. Okay. So we've got an airplane and the forces on the airplane are gravity and the force of lift. And when we break those down, into force of lift y and force of lift x. We can do some of the forces in the x direction and some of the forces in the y direction. Is this still the lab? Say it one more time. Is this still the lab or is it a homework problem? This is the lab. Okay. Uh, this is the last question on the lab. Okay. And uh, Ashton, remind me what was on this question. What did it give you and what did it ask for? It gave you the mass, which was 700 kilograms. It gave you the linear velocity, which was 46.3 meters per second. And it gave you the standard bank angle of 3 degrees. Yeah, but I'd have to give you a conversion or it would have to be on your equation sheet. I don't know that knots is on your equation sheet, although it is a standard unit used by pilots. Okay. So yeah, yeah, you can't use knots in these equations. <clears throat> Okay, so when we put, uh, when we do the sum of the forces in the x direction, the only one we have is this one. So we just put that in there. And that equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. Is it accelerating that way? It's accelerating towards the center, right? Yeah, so this is gonna be mass times v squared over r because that'll be our centripetal acceleration. And for FLX, we remember uh, we did this yesterday. This angle up here, that's your three degrees. And so this side down here is opposite. So we'll have to use sine for that. So we're going to multiply this up here. So FLX is going to be F, the force of lift times the sine of theta equals mv squared over r. Now we don't know r and we don't know force of lift, so we'll have to go to the y equation. So there's one equation, two unknowns. So now we go to the y equation, we have two forces in the y equation. 
So we'll have the force of lift in the y direction minus the force of gravity equals, uh, what's the acceleration in the y direction? Zero, right? Yes, why? Uh, it's accelerating on the center, not up or down. That's right. It's, it's going in a circle, but the circle is flat. So it's not going up or down. <coughs> so we'll just add the, F, the force of gravity to the other side. So the force of lift in the y direction is equal to the force of gravity. And then the force of lift in the y direction is this side. So that's touching the angle. So that's going to be cosine theta. So we can solve for the force of lift in the y direction by multiplying that up here. So we'll have the force of lift times the cosine of theta equals mg. And since we know m and g and theta, we can solve for the force of lift here. And once we have that, we can plug it in over here and that'll tell us the radius. Is the radius supposed to be like Remarkably large. Yeah, it's going to be thousands of meters. Yeah, like, I got like four, over 4,000 meters. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about a, a jetliner. When it makes a turn, you know, the radius of its turn is huge. It's, it's, it's traveling very fast and trying not to make its passengers sick. And then from there, we can find omega through V over R, right, to that transformation? Yes, exactly. Once you, uh, once you know R, then uh, V equals omega times R, so you can get omega. And that's, for me, that was a really small number, so that's like point zero one radians per second. Yeah, it's not much. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's got a big turn angle, so it, doesn't, it takes it a long time to turn uh, uh, just a little ways. And do we have to do sig figs for this problem? No, it's just, this is just a regular problem. There's no measurements here. So and then for part B, would you change the bank angle to 107 instead of 3? No, so for part B, okay, so can I erase this stuff? Yeah, okay. Um, For part B, it's talking about something totally different. So the three degrees is the angle at which the wings are tipped, which isn't much, just three degrees. It's just a slight tip so that it has a very slow chain, so it has a very slow turn. But the 107 isn't talking about a bank angle. That, I mean, think about what that would mean. I mean, this is, this is normal flat. 90 degrees would be straight like this. 107 would be like half, you know, part way upside down. I mean, that's, that's not a good way to fly an airplane. And, uh, but what it's talking about here is if this is the wings of the airplane, and then the airplane is here, there's the tail, here's the propeller up here. Okay, the airplane's traveling this way, and it decides to bank its wings, it's now gonna turn. So it's gonna turn, it's gonna begin a turn and it turns 107 degrees. And so that theta, that 107 degrees, is referring to how much it turns. So that when it gets done, now the airplane's traveling this way. So is that 107, is that delta theta? Yes. And can we use omega from the Part A? Yes. That ends up being like, for the time, it takes like two hours or something to change that. Well, they're not, they must have done math or something. I... Oh, okay, so, um, so now what you're talking about, Ashton, is you're saying omega is delta theta over time? and you're, as, you're solving for time here, mm -hmm. that delta theta has to be, this equation only works if this is measured in radians. Um, yep, that, that makes a lot more sense. So the, you gotta use standard units. 
So you've got to convert 107 into radians, plug that in there, and then you can solve for T. So you can still use 8 equation, you just convert the angle to radians instead? Yes. Okay, how y'all doing? Does that help with that? Okay. Wait, and for part C, would the radius be the same that we found in part A, or is it yeah. completely different radius? Nope, same one. That's that's this that's this radius here. How the, the, the distance to the center of the circle as the airplane goes around its turn. And we and we found that in part A, right? When we were trying to find the angular velocity? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like for the test on Tuesday. Yes. Okay, so I don't want to ask what's gonna be on it because you're not gonna tell me. But like <laughs> it's on section it's like on chapters five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and it's also a bonus question from chapter one, right? Correct. Or is that not happening? That's, okay. That is so happening. Chapter one bonus question. Yes. And then it's five, six, seven, eight. True. There's one bonus question? One bonus question yeah, for chapter, for one. chapter one. one. Yeah. So the bonus question is from chapter one, and it wouldn't be from like chapter four or like chapter three? It'll be the same material as chapter one, which is one, two, three, and four. Oh, so test one material? Correct. So the bonus okay. question covers the test one material and it's points mm -hmm. for test one, mm -hmm. not for test two. And it'll still be like only like, the rest of the test will only be like six, seven questions. Or will it be a little bit longer? Uh, no, it'll be about the same as what we ever, what we did last time. I, I, what was it, six questions, I think? I think. Yeah, it, it was six questions last time. It'll be similar to that. Can we leave the answer in seconds for part B? Uh, yeah, it doesn't specify. Can you go over the right hand rule thing for like the torque? Yes. Uh, I watched the videos and that part kind of confusing. It is confusing, I agree. Uh, the, the thinking in terms of 3Ds is, is, is a challenge. Okay, can I erase all this? Okay. Okay, so there's there's two right hand rules that you need to know, okay? So, uh let's see. Hmm. I don't have a wrench in here. That's sad. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's. I'm going to draw a square uh, nut, and we're going to put a uh, a wrench on it. I'm sorry, I'm not a very good artist. My wrench kind of looks like Pac-Man. Anyway, uh, this is a wrench. Uh, I can't draw a wrench. Oh, I know what I'll do. <laughs> Okay, this is a wrench. Just pretend. I'm not a very good artist. Okay, uh, a socket set, a socket wrench. Okay, and there, there's a there's a nut there in here that you need to tighten. Okay, a bolt, and you have to tighten it. And so what you do here is you apply a force uh, here. And so from the pivot point, so you're gonna you're gonna turn this thing and and you're going to take off the, the nut here, okay? And so the distance from the pivot point to where you apply the force is called the radius, okay? So that torque is equal to the radius times the force, but they have to be perpendicular. Now the direction is important, okay? So these are all three vectors. And here comes your first right-hand rule. Okay, your thumb is the first thing in this product, the R. 
Okay, your thumb is R. Your fingers are the force. The answer comes out of your palm and it's the torque. Okay? So, so let me, you gotta put your thumb, the radius points this way, so I gotta put my thumb that way. And then the force goes down, so I gotta put my fingers down. And then the answer comes out of my palm, so it's out of the board. So the answer to this torque problem is out of the board. And we would draw that, uh, just, just put a dot there with a circle around it. So the answer is out of the board. Okay, that's the first right hand rule. If you use your left hand, you'll get it exactly wrong. You gotta use your right hand. Okay, does that make sense? Is that one okay with everybody? Now here's what that means, and this is the second right hand rule. So the second right hand rule gives you the meaning of that, okay? The second right hand rule is this. Your thumb goes in the direction of the vector, so the torque is coming out, so that's where your thumb is. Now notice last time, my thumb was the radius. It's not anymore. Now my thumb is the torque, okay? The torque comes out of the board and my fingers curl in the direction that the wrench will turn. So the wrench will turn that way because the thumb went out and my fingers curled around. This is, this is common sense if you've ever played with a wrench. You know, you put it on the nut and, they, and then it turns that way. It's, just, it's this, just the way it does. It's just that two right hand rules describe it. So what does the second one mean? The second one tells you which way it turns. So the fact that the torque is coming out of the board is kind of doesn't really mean much. It just means that that's the way you turn it. And if you have, um, here's one, a, a bottle, for instance. Uh, there, there's a, there's a, a cap on here that's, that's a screw-on cap, right? So if I want to take this cap off, I, I want it to go up. So my fingers tell me which way I need to turn it to make it go up. And to put it on, I have to turn it the other way. That's what that second right hand rule means. So would your answer be like clockwise or counterclockwise? Yes, exactly. Okay. Does that help, Gabby? Okay. What other questions do y'all have? Can we go over number one? Because those free body diagrams are insane looking. Okay. Yes. next Tuesday so there, this is like our only help time right we'll have class on Tuesday oh yeah oh no you you won't at five o'clock you're right are we able to come to the 9 a.m. one yes okay. yeah so that's that's always true of all students in all the classes if you want to come to any of the other classes you're welcome to because we're outside for the 10 o'clock class, we'll still have like regular class. Yep, we'll the yep. The 9 o'clock class and the 10 o'clock class will both have regular classes. And then we'll have the test at 4 o'clock. And that's outside or inside? Um, outside. Okay. Will we like be learning stuff on Tuesday or will it be like kind of like ask questions? For you, like It'll be class? open question day. Okay, so uh, so I'm looking at uh, number one. Isn't that the one you asked for, Ashton? Yes, sir. Okay, so number one, it shows uh, an arm and a shoulder and uh, the deltoid, right? So it uh, shows the tricep, but I think it's asking about the deltoid. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's the arm. Thumb, four fingers, arm. 
here's an elbow. <laughs> and uh, there's a ball at this end and it's inside of a socket. Okay, there you go. That's the arm. And um, it, ha it tells you to start with, it tells you the weight of this arm. And the weight acts at the center of mass, which is right in the middle of the arm. So this is the force of gravity. And it gives it to you in newtons. Uh, so that is already m times g. Ashton, what, were your, what was your number here? 39.9 for the weight. Okay. And uh, so it gives you the weight and then it tells you the direction um, that the deltoid pulls it. Uh, let's see. Determine the magnitudes of the force of tension in the deltoid muscle and the force that the shoulder FS exerted by the shoulder on the humerus. Okay, so the deltoid, which is uh, which is this muscle up here. I don't know why they drew the tricep down here, but the deltoid is up here, and it's going to pull it this way. So this is the force of tension in the deltoid, and it pulls it up that way, and it gives you an angle. I think it says 12 degrees. And then it says that as a result of these two forces, the shoulder pushes back on it. So that's what's going to happen here. Um, the, when, you, when you hold this up like this, your deltoid is going to be pulling down here. And it's going to pull the arm kind of crooked that way. But it, the arm doesn't move that way because there's a, sh a socket here. The shoulder is right here holding it in place. And so that's going to push it back and down. And uh, so that's this force here. And it gives you a, it just, uh, I, I'm not a very good artist here. Let's see, I'll draw it steeper. There we go. The force of the shoulder. And it doesn't give you an angle, but it does give you a uh, pivot point here. And it tells you this distance here. Um, 0.08. And it tells you this distance here, 0.29. Okay, so there's the uh, there's the free body diagram. Okay. Now you've got two crooked vectors here, so we've got to break both of those up. So, uh, let's see. This one, we'll, we'll break it up here. Force of shoulder X, force of shoulder Y. And uh, the other one is up here. Force of the tension from the deltoid Y and force of the tension from the deltoid X. And where did it put the angle on this, this triangle down here? Was it here or here? Top angle, bottom angle? I don't think so. Oh, oh, well, yeah, but it, it didn't give you the angle. It just told you where it was at. Yeah, it's just beta. Yeah, but it's, it's the bottom angle. It actually gives you this angle here. Did you just do a blank for anybody else? Oh, I'm sorry. I did it again, didn't yeah. I? I don't know why that why it does that sometimes. When I go back and forth between the um, web assign and this one, sometimes it decides to turn my camera off. Did it, did it come back now? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, it gave you this, it calls this angle up here theta, but where is that in my triangle? Is it the top angle or the bottom angle? It's got to be the bottom, right? Yes, because of, interior. exactly, because of alternate interior angles.
Okay, so uh, what we want to do here is with all of these um, what are called statics problems where there's a torque but the thing isn't moving that's what static means it means it's not moving you have three things that you can use Newton's second law in both the X and the Y so those are the first two and Newton's second law angular so what you've got here is some of the forces in the X direction equals zero it's zero because it's not accelerating. Some of the forces in the y direction equal zero. And I'll write it over here because there's no more space over there. Some of the torques equal zero. Those are your three equations here. So does torque not have a direction? It does, uh, and it's, a, it's that right hand rule thing. You got to you got to apply that direction. So um, you're right, and it's it's either out of or into the board. In real life, it's three dimensional, but uh, for the purpose of this class, it's always either out of or into the board. So uh, so let's do. Let's see, what don't we know? I, we don't know this. We don't know the force of tension. So we're asked for that. Force of tension equals question mark. That's how hard is the deltoid pulling. And then it, we don't know the shoulder, the force of the shoulder. How hard is the shoulder pulling? And we don't know theta. So notice we have three unknowns and three equations. I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we have the three, those three equations. How do you know that those are the three that you need to use? Um, we're breaking the, the X and the Y. Well, it, so uh, this is what's happening here. That person is holding their arm out and it's not moving, which means it's not accelerating X, it's not accelerating Y, and it's not accelerating by turning either. So it's not being yanked over in a circle one way or the other. So that's what these three things stay. Is that it's not being accelerated in a circle, it's not being accelerated horizontally, and it's not being accelerated vertically. So, so basically the answer to your question is um, Newton figured that out back in the day and we just say, oh that was a good idea and we go with it. And it works. Does that answer your question, Gabby? Kinda? I suppose. If it doesn't move, do this. Okay. And those aren't on our, like, the sum of the torque equals zero. That's not on our equation, so you can just know that. Oh, no, it is. Uh. Some of the torques equals I alpha. But alpha is angular acceleration. And since this arm isn't spinning, the angular acceleration is zero. Oh, I and, and this is MAX, but it's not accelerating, so this is zero. Okay. And the same with this one. Does that, does that help with it? Okay. Okay, so uh, which one do y'all want to do first? X, Y, or torque? X. Okay, let's do X first. So, uh, y'all go ahead and read them to me. What do we have? What forces in the X direction do we have? F, F, X. Mm -hmm. And that one's going to the right, so it's positive. And F, T, X. And that's it. Are they both positive? F, T, X is negative? Yes. Why? There's one left. Exactly. Okay, now we've got some triangles here. What side of the triangle is F, T, X? Adjacent or hypotenuse? Yep, that's adjacent. So, um, let 
FTX is going to be what? How do we write that in terms of sines and cosines and the hypotenuse? The FT cosine of 12, yeah. And what about FSX, this one down here? S, S, cosine of theta? Yep. Good. Okay, so we'll plug both of those in over here. And so we'll have F, S, cos theta minus F, T, cos 12 equals zero. And I can just add this one to the other side to make our life a little bit easier. Fs cos theta equals Ft cos 12. Okay, how y'all doing? Does that make sense? Okay, now I didn't, leave myself much space over here. So I'm gonna start this one at the top and I'll use blue so we don't get them mixed up. Let's do, maybe I'll do it over here. Some of the forces in the y direction equal zero. What do we have in the y direction? Uh, negative FSY. Yes. And positive FTY. And one more. Yep, there you go. Those three equations. And we, ca we can write both of these in terms of trig functions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. What's the FSY in terms of trig functions? FG sine theta. Yes. Fs oh, yeah. sine theta plus Fty. What's that one going to be? T sine of 12. Yep. Ft sine, oops, not theta, 12 minus uh, the force of gravity equals zero. Okay, so just look. At, notice what we have here. We have this equation that has one, two, three unknowns. We have this equation that has one, two, three unknowns. Same three. So we've got two equations, three unknowns. We just, we just need one more equation. That's when we go over here. Okay, so whenever you're doing some of the torques, step one is to define a pivot point. Where does this thing rotate? I mean, if you've got your arm held out like this, where does it rotate? The shoulder. Yeah, it rotates at the shoulder. So let's make this right there at the shoulder, let's make that our pivot point. So keeping in mind that a torque is R perpendicular to force, what torques act on this arm? Well, let me, cha let me change the question. Why isn't the shoulder, why isn't the force of the shoulder, why doesn't that cause a torque? It's not perpendicular. Uh, like only part of it is. Well, part of it is perpendic perpendicular. So we could use that part, but that's not the problem. There's another problem. Because it's on a pivot point. Say it again, Matthew. Because it's on a pivot 
because of all the pivot points, so the radius is zero. Yeah, it's that the force of the shoulder is acting on the pivot point. So there's no radius. Since there's no radius, there's no torque. This is like pushing on the hinge of a door. You can push on the hinge of the door all day long and you'll never open the door because it doesn't exert any torque. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Pushing on the hinge of a door won't open it for you. Okay, so the force of the shoulder exerts no torque, but the del deltoid does. Okay, so we need to write the radius times the force for the deltoid. Okay, so what's the radius for the deltoid? Your, the picture on your, in your book might be better than mine. Mine got, gets kind of messy here. Is it the 0.29? Uh, that's all the way over here to the elbow. Oh. That's the 0.08. Yeah, it's, it's just this distance. From the pivot point to the place where the force acts. That's the radius. Right here. From the pivot point to the place where the force acts. So the first torque is going to be 0.08, that's the radius, times the force. Now, which one of these forces, the y component or the x component, which one of those is perpendicular to the radius? Y or x? Um, y. Yes, the y component is. So we're going to multiply this times Fty, and that'll be our first torque. Now, something we haven't addressed yet is, is this positive or negative? So here's how you figure that out. Um, I'm putting markers together here to let that be my arm. Okay, so there's my arm. The pivot point is right here. Okay. And this deltoid, which way is that pushing it? Up or down? Yeah, up. So if the deltoid pushes it up, which way does it cause it to turn? Now for this you have to use your right hand rule. Um, your fingers, okay. yeah, counterclockwise. It makes your fingers go this way, which is out of the board, which is positive. Counterclockwise. So this is a positive torque. You all, want me to, you all want me to say that again? Run again? Yes. Okay. So the deltoid muscle, this, this muscle on the top of your arm, when you, when you flex this muscle, it picks your arm up. It causes it to go up. Okay? That direction of rotation, okay, that direction of rotation is this way. It, your fingers, in, in order to make this happen, your fingers have to curl that way to point in that direction. When your fingers curl that way, your thumb points out. Out of the board is positive. Into the board is negative. Out of the board is positive. Don't use your left hand, it only works with your right hand. And y'all really gotta practice it. I mean, try it with your right hand. Like, right now. <laughs> your fingers go that way, your thumb goes out. That's the only way to figure it out, just to practice using your right hand. And when you're taking this test, don't be embarrassed about doing weird things with your right hand because you have to. It's, you won't get it right if you don't. And, 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 and when you do it, if you're right-handed, put your pencil down and then do it. Because, uh, yeah, anyway. If you don't do that, you'll use your left and that'll be wrong. And that's the second right hand rule that you just talked about, where the torque is your thumb, the radius, I guess, is your palm, the force is different. So, so uh, no, the, the, the torque is my thumb, and my fingers just t tell me which way it turns. So I actually went the other way with it. My fingers said which way it turns, and then my fork said that's the direction, of, my, fing my thumb said that's the direction of the torque. Okay. Does that make sense? So if it's going out, it's positive. Correct. If it's going in, it's negative. Correct. Okay, so that's our first torque. There's another torque on this arm. What is it? There's another force that causes the torque. What is it? The shoulder. Well, the shoulder doesn't cause a torque because it's pulling on the pivot point. Is it the force of gravity? Yeah, this one 
is causing a torque. So notice our radius for this one is from the pivot point here all the way over here to where the force of gravity acts at the center of mass. So the radius is this, 0.29 and the force is the force of gravity and they're already perpendicular now is that one going to be positive or negative? which way is the gravity pulling it? down, down. so when this is here and the gravity pulls it down your fingers have to rotate that way because that's the direction it goes and your thumb points into the board. Negative. So this is a negative torque. And those are the only torques so they have to add up to zero. Um, well, yeah, now we can, this FTY, we have an equation for it, it's, it's this thing over here. What's, what, in terms of sines and cosines, what is that one going to be? FTY of 12? Yes. So we're going to have 0 0.08 times FT sine of 12 minus 0.29 times the force of gravity which was given to us as 39.9 at least that was Ashton's number and now you ha know everything in this equation except for the force of tension I'm sorry the force of the tension of the deltoid So that'll give you force of tension if the deltoid. And once you solve for that, you can then plug that in up here, and then you'll have two, you'll plug it in here and here. So now you'll have two equations with two unknowns, and then you can solve those also. Okay, uh, so at this point, the physics is done. We found the three equations to solve for our three unknowns. We still have the algebra to do, but tell me how y'all are doing. What questions do you have? Yeah. Does this one, are y'all, any questions on this one? Y'all all right? Do y'all want to see the algebra for this or are you, you good? I Who's? think I can figure it out. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll move on unless somebody throws out a question. Okay. So let's look at number two then. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so Okay, so uh, calculate the net torque 
magnitude and direction on the beam in the figure below about the following axes. An axis through the, through the origin perpendicular to the page. And then an ax, uh, the axis through C perpendicular to the page. Okay, so uh, let me draw it. So you just have a beam. We're calling this point here the origin. And there's a force coming out of that beam, 30 newtons, 45 degrees. And then there's a spot smack in the middle, C, for center. And there's a force going kind of crooked up here, 25 newtons at 30 degrees. And then at the very end, there's a force here. 10 newtons at 20 degrees. Okay, and what it wants you to do first is find the net torque And the first, and so whenever you're finding net torque, you have to first define your pivot point. Um, what do they call it? They call it they call it the axis in this thing. The, the thing that it rotates around. You know, the, the thing on a bicycle wheel is called the axle. It's the thing that the wheel turns around. And uh, so for part A, it says make this the origin, your pivot point, your axle, your axis. So now if that's the case, then how much torque does this force exert? Zero. Zero. Why? Because it's um, directly on the pivot point. Exactly. It's pulling on the pivot point. It's not going to turn in any direction. It's like pushing on the hinge of a door. Nothing's going to happen. But that's going to cause a torque and this will cause a torque. So let's, those are both crooked vectors, so let's break them down. So. What's this side going to be? How are we going to find it? 25 cosine 30. Yep. And what's this side going to be? So 25 sine or yeah, sine 30. Good. And now we'll do the same thing with this one over here. We'll break this one up. So what's this side going to be? Up here? Um, 10 cosine 20. And what's this one going to be? 10 sine 20. Okay. So this one, this, for, this force here exerts no torques. So we're not going to include that. Uh, this one will exert a torque. What's our radius going to be? I got a question real quick. Go for it. Yeah, I think you said two. Is that what you said, Gabby? Yeah. Okay. Ashton, what was your question? Um, why is it that that left one that's 30 newtons, that force of 30 newtons on the left? Yes. Why is it not putting, uh, why is it, why is it not putting a torque on? Because it's pulling on the hinge. So we're saying, we're not saying this thing's rotating like, the axle, we're saying it's rotating like this? Yeah, we're saying the axle is here. And so this torque here, this force here is trying to rotate it that way, but this force here is trying to rotate it the other way, but this one's not trying to rotate it at all. It's just, it's pulling it, but it's not rotating it. 
Yeah, I was thinking of it spinning like a like a axle instead of like a door. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. It's do the door. It's a door, and the hinge is right here. Just for part A. Now, for part B, we change the axle, the axis. But for part A, it's here. <coughs> okay, so when we add up these torques, our first radius is going to be 2 because a torque is a radius perpendicular to a force. <coughs> so 2 times what? 25, 25 cos 30 or 25 sine 30. What do we write? 25 cos 30. Why? It's perpendicular. Yeah, it's the one that's perpendicular. So we need 25 cos 30 here. So now that's our first torque. Is it going to be positive or negative? Now you should be breaking out your right hand here and figuring it out. Which way do your fingers have to rotate? Which way do your fingers have to curl? to make this thing turn the way that force is pulling it. Is it this way or is it this way? You've only got two choices. How do you know which way it's pulling it? Well, it's pulling it up. So if the beam is here, this force is pulling it up, so it's going to push it that way. So you've got to make your fingers curl that way. So it's positive? Yeah, so my thumb goes out of the board with that, so it's positive. So this is a positive torque. Could you also use the first method with that by putting your thumb along the two meters and then your force fingers in there towards the force and then your palm is out, just coming out of the board? Yeah, that works too. Okay. R, R is your thumb, fingers are your force, the torque comes out of the board, out of the board is positive. That's correct. Okay, so that's our first torque. What's our second torque? It's this one down here. Yeah, so that's going to be the force that we're going to use. What's our radius going to be? Four meters? Yes, it's from the pivot point to the place where the force acts, which is right there, which is four meters. So it's going to be 4 meters times, and Gabby already said it, it was 10 times the sine of 20. Now is this one positive or negative? I think it's negative. You're correct. So we can look at, we can do it either way. So this force here is trying to rotate it down, which means this, this whole beam, if this one wins, is going to swing that way. And the only way that happens is if, you curls, if your fingers curl that way, your thumb has to go into the board, so it's negative. Or you could look at it the way Ashton did a minute ago. Your thumb is R, the force is down, so your palm has to go into the board, which is negative. So either way, this is a negative torque. And we're just supposed to multiply this out and add them up. There you go, that's the sum of the torques. Okay. Does that help y'all? Okay, uh, what would we do different for part B? I'm just gonna move that axis right to C. Yep, so now we're gonna move this over here and so we'll have, still have two forces, but now this one exerts no torque. Right. So, but this one will now. So would that thing, hmm, would that thing spin like out of the board? Or would no, it it's, like it's still going to be, it's still going to spin like this, one way or the other. For part A, I got negative 28 and I don't know, I got it wrong. Okay. Uh, let me see my calculator here. I don't know if I'm just typing it in
<clears throat> What'd you get, Gabby? Negative 28. That's not what I got. I just think I got. Excuse me. Well, my third time doing it, I got 4.06, but it's normal. Would the mode make a difference? Yeah, you got to have this in degrees. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we're taking the sine of 30 degrees, so you got to have your calculator in degrees. I'm going to get a cup of water while you all punch that out. What'd you get now that you changed your calculator? I got it right. It was 29.6. Good. And since that force on top is bigger than the force pulling it down, it would rotate counterclockwise, right? Is that the, is that right. the way? Right. Th that's, that, that's what that number tells you, that 29.6. That's a positive number. And positive is out of the board, which means it's going to rotate counterclockwise. Okay, <clears throat> so what's next? Do you all want to do part B or do you want to do that on your own? Um, I kind of want to try it on my own. Yep, sounds like a good plan. <sighs> Goodness gracious. This test is going to be whack. <laughs> this test is going to be insane. It's, it's four chapters just like the first test was. So, but yeah, you're right. It's a lot of material real quick, real quick. But that's the nature of this class. It just, this class just goes. So if we weren't cut back by three weeks, would we, would we be learning like slower kind of? We're not cut back by anything. We have the same, uh, we're, uh, this we're semester is, back, but we lost breaks. yeah, so we didn't lose any class time. We lost break time. What you saying? Goodness. Yeah, I know. Can we do number three now? Sure. Yeah, I agree that break time is a, a valuable time to let your brain recover. <clears throat> okay, number three. Okay, so there's a beam, it's resting on two pivot points. <clears throat> and um, it says the length is six meters and the mass is 75 kilograms. So the mass of the beam is 75 kilograms. Or Gabby, what numbers do you have? Mine says 75. What does yours say? What's the mass of the beam? Um, 94. <clears throat> And uh, says the pivot under the left arm exerts a normal force on the beam. Of course, that's what a pivot's always going to do. And the distance from here to here, it says, is four. And then it says the mass of a woman, which is, mine says 64. What is yours, Gabby? The mass of the woman is what? Um, 58.5. And 
and she steps onto the left end of the beam and begins walking right across as shown in the picture. The goal is to find the, the woman's position when the beam begins to tip. Okay, so <clears throat> just logically, where is it going to tip? As she walks across this, is it going to tip while she's in here somewhere between these two? What do y'all think? Yeah, it's going to tip sometime after this pivot point, right? So when mm -hmm. she's over here somewhere, that's when it's going to tip. I mean, you're right, it'll tip the most when she's all the way at the end, but we're not supposed to find the place where it tips the most. We're supposed to find the place where it just begins to tip. Where's that balance point? Okay? And so, <clears throat> it calls this distance from here to here, X. Okay? I think that's what it calls it, isn't it? Yeah. And, okay, so what are the forces on the beam? There's four of them. What are they? What did you say, Gravity. Ashley? Gravity of, the, of what? On the woman and beam, right? Yeah, so the beam itself is six meters long, so the force of gravity of the beam acts right in the middle. The force of gravity from the beam. The woman, the force of gravity acts from her belly button, so right wherever she's standing, force of gravity of the woman is where the force of gravity is going to act on the beam. But there's two more forces. Why does this beam go down? No force. And there's two of those, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to push it up here, normal force one, and here, normal force two. Is there a normal force on the one and two? Well, there is, sure enough, but we're looking for the forces on the beam. And so, this is a, a static problem, so it's just, it's just at the balance point. It's not rotating, it's just at that point. If she steps any further, then it'll rotate. So she's at that maximum point, and so uh, we can say three things. Um, some of the torques is equal to zero. Some of the forces in the x direction equal zero. And some of the forces in the y direction equal zero. <coughs> That was going to be my first question. So what do you think, Gabby? Are there? I don't think so. Yeah, there's nothing. This, this is add up all the forces in the direction of which there are none. So we would say zero is the sum of those forces. And guess what? That equals zero, which is a very true statement, but utterly useless. <laughs> so um, this is true, but uh, we don't care. So now let's go to the y direction. So I'm just going to get rid of this. It doesn't help us. So now let's go to some of the forces in the y direction. What do we have there? Force of gravity of the beam. Mm-hmm. Positive or negative? Gravity. Well, that's negative. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have force of gravity of the beam. Negative force of gravity of the woman. And? And then plus. Force one and force two. Yes. All those have to add up to zero. Now, <clears throat> there's one piece of logic that we have to that we have to figure out here. When this thing is tipping, it's it's right at the point where it's beginning to tip. What's normal force one? If it's right at that point where it's just beginning to tip, it's a teeter-totter, basically. It's zero, right? Yeah. 
when, when, when you've, you've, read, you've been on a teeter-totter before with you on one side and your friend on the other and you've got it so that you two are just exactly balanced, you, neither one of you has to touch the ground, right? When you get it at that point, there needs to be no normal force on the end. It's all balanced by the, 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 the beam in the middle. So for this problem, at, this, at the balance point, N1 is zero. And so now we can find N2. So uh, I'll just add both of these to the other side. N2 is equal to force of gravity of the beam plus force of gravity of the woman, and we now have N2. <coughs> Which, uh, let's look at their questions here. What are they asking on this? Sketch a free body diagram. We did that. Where is the woman when N... Oh, okay, so let's, let's answer these in order. Question B asks, as the woman starts walking from here to over there, where in that whole process is N1 the greatest? Is it when she's standing over it? Yeah, when she's standing right on top of it. That's when N1 will be the greatest, right? It was like zero? And, yeah, so when X is zero. When X is zero, that's when N1 will be greatest, and it will decrease as she walks over there. Okay? And now, what's the next question asking here? The next question says, <clears throat> what is N1 when the beam is about to tip? Well, we just talked about that, so what is it when it's about to tip? It's zero. zero. And then, what's the next question asked? The next question says, Use the force equation of the equilibrium to find the value of N2. Oh look, that's what we just did over here. Um, and now, let's see, using the result from part C, that's that thing, um, and the torque equilibrium equation, which is this right here, with the torus computed about the second pivot point, find the woman's position when the beam is about to tip. Okay, so now it finally asks, what's X? Okay, and it tells you where to put your pivot point, although mathematically it doesn't matter, you can pick any pivot point you want. So uh, where would you all like to put your pivot point? I guess on the second little triangle. Yeah, I mean, logically, that's where it's tipping, right? So that is where it pivots. So let's make that the pivot point. Okay, so here's our pivot point right here. Okay, so now if that's our pivot point, let's figure out our torques. What, tor what forces are causing a torque? The force of gravity. Mm -hmm. Which one? Both of them, right? Yeah. Well, you're right. They both are. Let's start with let's start with the beam. Okay. What's what's going to be the radius? Oh. Yeah. It's from the pivot point to the place where the force acts. So it's just this distance. So where is that? Three. Nope. Uh, the beam acts in the middle, the force of gravity of the beam acts in the middle, which is at three. Where's this pivot point? The one who one. Yeah, it's four minus three, which is one. So that first radius is just going to be one. And the force of gravity of the beam, we know that it's going to be using Gabby's numbers here, 94 times uh, 
9.81. And is this going to be a positive torque or a negative torque? Which way is it? Yes. This one's, if, if, if our pivot point is here, this force is going to pull it down, it's going to cause it to rotate this way, which is out of the board. Or you can do the thing that you did before, R, F, your, your thumb is R, your fingers are force, torque is out of the board. So this is going to be a positive torque. Okay, so that's our first torque. What's our second torque? Yes, yeah, so our radius is going to go from here to here. How far is that? Is it one again? Well, we don't know. We don't know what x is, right? The question is, what's x? Is our radius x? This is our radius right here from the pivot point, but x is from here to here. How far is this? Four. And this is x, so what's r? What is it? X minus four. Yeah, so our r is x minus four. <clears throat> and the force is going to be 58.5 times 9.81. Now that equals zero, right? And this has to equal zero. Now, is this torque a positive torque or a negative torque? Yes. Why is it negative? Uh, because this is going to push it down this way, which is this way. The woman, if we ignore the weight, just the weight of the woman, the way the woman is going to tip it this way which is into the board. If we use the other one, will I have to put my thumb in the positive direction? Yep, your thumb goes R, your fingers go down, force goes into the board. And now we have this nice equation. It's kind of ugly, but not too bad. And we just solve it for X. Do y'all want to see how to do the algebra, or you got it? Can you show me, because I got it wrong. Yeah, let me, let me put in letters here instead of all these numbers. Uh, let's see. 1 times mass of the beam times gravity minus x minus Four, which is cursive L times mass of the woman times gravity equals zero. 
Um, I'm going to add all this to the other side. So I have mass of the beam times gravity equals x minus L times mass of the woman times gravity. <clears throat> gravity will cancel out on both sides. I'll distribute this mass of woman in here and here. So we get mass of the beam is equal to mass of the woman times x minus mass of the woman times L. And now I'll add this back over. So we have mass of the beam plus mass of the woman times L equals mass of the woman times x. And then we'll divide both sides by mass of the woman. How would we go about doing part F? Okay. <clears throat> Check the answer to part E by computing the torques around the first pivot point. Oh, okay. So you would do the same problem again, except instead of saying this is your pivot point, now you say this is your pivot point. And you find new torques. So your radiuses will change, but the forces will still be the same, and you'll have a third force in there. So. When you multiply this out, let's see, you're going to have We'll still do the same with the sum of the torques equals zero. It's just that our new pivot point will be over here. And so we'll have this will be a torque, this will be a torque, and this will be a torque. So you'll have three torques you'll have to put in here. And each one will have its own radius. Does that kind of make sense? Do you want me to work it all out, Gabby? I'm just kind of waving my hands. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so for this first one, will our radius here from here to here would be how much? Is it three? Yep. And force of, force of gravity of the beam, so mass of the beam times gravity. And would, that, would this force cause a negative torque or a positive torque? Maybe positive? It's, now we're not using this as a pivot point, we're using this as our pivot point. Mm -hmm. So, our pivot point is over here, and this force is going to push it down, so it's going to cause it to rotate that way, which is into the board. So I'll this would be, 
Right hand rule. <laughs> Okay, and now we'll have to do this one, the, the normal force number two. And so that will be four meters, the radius will be. And then N2, which we figured out in part C. And will this, tor will this force cause a positive torque or a negative torque? Positive. Yep. And then we'll have one more torque. It'll be this one. So uh, our force, I mean our distance will be x. And it'll be mass of the woman times gravity. And will, that, will the torque caused by this force be positive or negative? Negative. And all this has to add up to 0. And now you know everything in here except for x. And you should get the same answer that you did last time. Do we know the normal form? Uh, yeah, you figured it out in part C. Okay. How y'all doing? Any questions on this one? Paris, I think you joined about halfway through this. Go ahead. Hey Paris, how you doing? Good. Um, did you get my email about the lab? Uh, I'm laughing because you're the third person since we started to ask me, did I get your email? And uh, apparently I've been really bad with email and because I've missed three. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but tell me, when did you send it? Um, like two or maybe like three days ago. Okay, go ahead and resend it unless you want to ask me now. I can ask you, it's just a quick question. Um, when we're calculating the momentum, if the mass like has five, Six figs, and then the the velocity has three. So if we get like a number, because like one of the numbers I got was like fifteen thousand three hundred and sixty-nine. Do I use it with three six figs and put fifteen thousand four hundred? Correct. So uh, what? Do you, tell me your numbers. So like my mass was two twelve point two nine, and then my um velocity was 72.4. And what do you get when you multiply all this out? Um, 15,369.796. Yeah, you, you have three here and five here, so your answer can only have three sig figs, so your answer is going to be 15,400. Okay, and then whenever we do the percent loss, do I use that 15? Or do I use the long number? The long number? Yep. For, for the you all, you, initial and the P final, I use the long number? That's right. So you never round anything off to the answer. So if you're reporting this as your answer, then, then you round it off. But if you're doing a calculation with it, then you don't round it off. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That was my question. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh huh. <coughs> What other questions do you all have? Y'all are quiet. Of course, it helps that the microphone's turned off, so. I feel like I've been asking the questions the whole time. If, I mean, you're, you're giving everybody an opportunity to ask, and if they don't ask, then you can go ahead. Um. I guess number five, because that one's on a pulley. Okay.
Okay, so let's see. Number five, is that what you said? Yes. Okay, so uh, the fact that it's on a pulley doesn't change anything. It's still a statics problem, just like what we've been doing. So you still have um, the beam here, and it's on a pivot point. And you've got a rope here. You've got a basket of goodies here. And you got a bear trying to get out there. And get the goodies. So you have uh, three forces on here. Well, you've got tension. That's a force. You've got a uh, force of gravity of the goodies. You've got force of gravity of, I don't know, Yogi, uh, a, a bear. And you've got the beam. Force of gravity, oh, bear and beam doesn't work. Let's call this one the pole. And I. Uh, <clears throat> the wall is going to be pushing also. Force of the wall X and force of the wall Y. So how do you know that the wall is pushing on it too? Is it just always do that? Well, imagine if the wall didn't. Say the wall didn't hold the beam up here, what would happen? Down. Yeah, if the rope held it up but the wall didn't, the beam would go womp and the bear would be on his booty on the bottom. So it, it's got to hold it up. The wall has to hold it up, otherwise it won't go. And, and likewise with this, if the, if the wall doesn't keep it from going this way, see how the tension's pulling it kind of crooked? Part of the tension's pushing it in. If the wall doesn't resist it, the beam will just go through the wall. And that wouldn't be good either. So, so the wall ha has to push up and push sideways. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, this is one of those problems that uh, that's a subtlety that you wouldn't have caught right away. So it helps that I showed it to you this time, and hopefully next time you'll see it next uh, earlier on. It, but it's a, it's a subtlety that you wouldn't you probably wouldn't have caught right away. Do you want to step through this one? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Notice the pulley at the top doesn't really change anything. It's just a way to tie it down. So would you break up the T into the X and the Y? Yep, exactly. So the T is going to pull it up and over. TX, TY. I'm going to move this label over here. And where did it put that angle? Oh, down at the bottom, okay. Oops. Oh, I did it again, didn't I? Oh, there I am, okay. <clears throat> so put the angle here, which is the angle up here, theta. And so we'd have for this problem, just like all the other ones, all three of those equations again. So let's start with this one. What forces in the x direction do we have? Um, the force of the wall x is positive uh -huh. and negative 
Yeah. Yep. And, and notice, this is where you would have figured out, oh, that wall has to push back, doesn't it? Because if you had, because, yeah, because if you just have this, you're like, how does something equal nothing? That can't be. It's mm -hmm. got to be that the wall pushes back. So yeah, yeah. And you're right. The first time you do that, you go, huh? Something's not right. But yeah, now that you see how to do it, hopefully you'll get it next time. Okay, now we'll do the forces in the y direction. What do we have? There's a lot of these. Py and the force of the wall y. Okay, good. And? Oh, um, minus the force of gravity of the bear and minus the force of gravity of the pole. Uh huh. And the minus the force of gravity of the goodies. And all that has to add up to zero. So notice these two equations here. This equation will tell you this. And this equation will tell you that as soon as you figure out T. But to figure out T, you have to go over here. So where should we put our pivot point? Um, would it be at the wall? Yeah, you can put it anywhere you want, but your life will be easiest if you put it at the wall. So there's the pivot point. Okay, and let's see, what, is, what does it say? How, how far does it say the, that the bear, wa oh, the bear walks out a distance x? <clears throat> and the beam is 200 newtons and a certain distance long. Okay, so, um, well, what torque should we include here? Um. Force of gravity. Mm -hmm. and we, so you don't include the force of the wall y and force of the wall x because it's on it. Correct. Okay. And then. TY? Yep, you're right. So this one, this one, this one, and TY, right? So there's going to be four torques here. Okay, so what's the radius for the bear? With the X? Yep. So it's going to be X times, uh, and it gives you the bear's weight in newtons, doesn't it? What is your number? Uh, 745. Um, and is this going to be positive or negative? Why is it negative? Because your thumb is facing away from you. Yeah, so your thumb's got to go over there and your fingers have to go down, okay. torques into the board. Or you can make it go, I'll it's going to rotate. Okay, yeah. it's going to rotate this way, which makes your thumb go into the board. And, and all these gravities are going to be that way. They're all going to make it rotate down. So they're all going to be all these gravities are going to be a negative torque. So the next one will be the pole. What's going to be the radius for that one? Um, would it be half your, like the distance that they gave you? Yep, half the length of the pole, because it's right in, right in the middle. Uh, what does it give you? What, what is your the length of yours? So mine was 5.5, 5, so would it be 2.75? Yeah.
And then it, it probably gave you a weight for the pole. Uh, 200. Okay. Minus. Next one. Let's do the goodies now. What's the radius going to be? Um, 5.5. Yeah, the whole, the whole pole. And one more, that'll be the tension. Which component do we use? Uh, PY. Mm hmm. And we'll use the whole 5.5 meters. And all this has to add up to zero. Now, let's see. <coughs> Okay, so part B says when X is 1.2, now find the tension. So it gives you X and says find T. Uh, what equation should we use there for TY? Um, uh, I Yep. Y sine function? You said it right. Opposite. Because that's TY is the opposite of the angle. Okay, that's good. So uh, you set this at 1.2 or whatever the number that Web sine gives you and solve this equation for T. Okay. And then, uh, and then it says once you know that, now find force the wall X and force the wall Y. And with T, you could find, or would you be able to find the other one? Yep, so once you know T here, then you can plug that in over here. Because uh, Tx, well, we already figured out Ty. Ty is T sine theta. What's Tx going to be? Uh, T cosine theta. So you plug in the T that you find over here, plug it in here, solve for that. And you plug it in here and solve for that, and that'll be your answer to the next question. So for C, it says if the wire can withstand a maximum tension of 825, what is the maximum distance to bear from the wall before the wire breaks? Yeah, so now with this one, you want to go back to this equation. And instead of saying T was, uh, instead of knowing X, now you know T and you solve it for okay. X. Okay. <clears throat> How you doing? Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. All this stuff starting to sink in? Hopefully. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay, have you had enough or do you want to do another one? Well, it's 5.27, so I don't want to keep you over your time. Well, I was late getting here, so we can do another one. If We can look at another one. Maybe I'll just get you started on the next one. When, it, when it's on a crooked plane, would it be different? Because that's number nine. Yeah, number nine is different uh, because it's moving. Oh, yeah. So this is not a static problem. This one is a dynamic problem. This one's moving. So you've got a, uh, an inclined plane with a pulley at the top 
and this pulley actually has mass and you've got this thing here to some mass and it is accelerating and it tells you the big M and it tells you the radius of the pulley what else does it tell me? Um, acceleration and theta. Is that is theta down here? Yeah. Okay. So it tells you all these things, and what does it ask for? Um, the tension in the rope, and it asks for the moment of inertia of the wheel. And then angular speed of the wheel, three seconds after it begins rotating. Okay, so uh, for this first part, what you'll want to do is identify the forces on this mass. So what are the forces on that mass? Um, force of gravity. Uh-huh. And? Normal form. Yep. And tension. Yep. And friction. Um, what does it say? Is friction? It's a friction. It's a frictionless incline. Okay. Okay. So you just have these three forces then, right? And which one of these is crooked? So force of gravity. Yep. So we break that one down. Here, so we have force of gravity Y, force of gravity X, and now we'll do some of the forces in the X direction and some of the forces in the Y direction on the block. Okay, so let's do X. What forces do we have? Tension and force of gravity X. Which one's negative? Um, tension. Okay, so minus tension plus force of gravity X equals mass times acceleration, and it gives you A. This um, angle up here is theta. So. Explain how you know that that angle is theta. Yeah. So let me draw it here. Uh, let me see. I'll draw gravity. I, what you do is you take this triangle and slide it down. So this blue and green triangle is right at the corner of the black triangle. So this goes right here. And this goes there and there. And now this angle here is given as theta. But from here, from the incline to this, that's perpendicular. It has to be because we made it that way. So what's this angle here? 90. Well, it's 90 from here to here. Mm -hmm. And this angle is theta, so this one here must be 90 minus theta. Does that make sense? Okay, and now from here to here is 90, and this angle here is 90 minus theta, so what does that make this angle? Theta. 90 minus 90 minus theta, which is theta. Do you see how that works?
Okay. <clears throat> so we can add tension over there and subtract MA over here so that tension is equal to um, force of gravity X minus MA. Okay, and do you have an equation for this, right? What's this equation? Mass times gravity? Oh, no, no, sorry. It's um, it's force of gravity cosine theta? Not cosine. No? Oh, wait, no. Force of gravity sine theta. Yeah. So tension is equal to m times g times sine theta minus m times a. Does that make sense? Uh, some of the forces in the y direction is only going to tell you normal force, which I don't think it asks for that. So we don't need to do that. It's not going to help. But because this is rope and it's pulling on this block, ropes always pull in two directions, so this rope is also pulling here. If the rope pulls the block up, then it necessarily pulls the pulley down, because that's what ropes always do. They always pull in both directions. Okay. And so now we can do some of the torques equals I alpha on the pulley. So how, how do you know to go on the pulley? Is it because you have an unknown and you need another object? Well, no. Uh, this equation answered our first question, which is what's the tension? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next question is what's the moment of inertia of the pulley? Oh, and okay. so that's where we are. We're trying to find I moment of inertia. <clears throat> so now we're, we're ignoring the block now and we're just looking at that pulley and if I was a good artist this would go to the middle. Okay, so the radius is here R. So looking at this, when we add up the torques on that pulley, we only have one thing to add up, radius times tension. And with wheels, whenever you've got a rope wrapped around the edge, it's always going to be perpendicular to the radius. It always is that way. So this is going to be radius of the wheel times tension equals I times alpha. Now this wheel is going to rotate that way because that's the direction that the tension is pulling it, which is into the board. That's negative. But it's going to accelerate that way. So this side is also negative. Not because I is negative, but because alpha is negative. So because acceleration is also a vector, you have to do that, the right-hand rule for that too? Yep. Okay. By the way, this equation here, this is, this is the angular version of that. Sum of the forces equals ma. This is the same thing. So remember that was that, the a there is the most missed negative sign. It's, it's here too. You got you to gotta get it there too. Now the, the last trick to this is figuring out, is realizing that if, if this block is accelerating this way, then the edge of this has that linear acceleration A, and the relationship between linear and angular is that. Okay. 
It's, it's at the top of your Fantastic Four there. Can you explain that again? Yeah, because this block is going this, accelerating this way, and it's got this rope attached to it, and this rope is attached to that disc, then the edge of this disc is, is linearly accelerating with that A. But because it's linearly the edge is linearly accelerating, the angular acceleration is related by this equation. It's just like a wheel rolling on the ground. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> oh, so we can solve this for alpha, and we'll plug that in there. And now we can solve it for i. Greek symbol name that is. Oh, this? Yeah. Omega? That's the angular speed. So in other words, this wheel starts out not moving, but it gets faster and faster and faster because it's angularly accelerating. And so it's going to get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And the question is, after it's been accelerating for three whole seconds, what's its new speed? So, um, We'd, we'd use uh, equation number two on the angular side. Mm -hmm. Alpha is equal to change in omega over time. That's angular speed and angular acceleration. So you just found alpha here. You plug in t is three mm -hmm. and omega initial is zero. They just solve for Mm-hmm. How's that? It makes sense. Okay. This one's a little bit different than the other ones because it's moving. Yeah. All the other ones we did today weren't moving. This one's moving. Okay. Well, I think we better quit here. Okay. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for joining today. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Let me know if you have questions. Okay. I sent you the email again. Oh, good. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.